The Texans linebackers came in looking like they could dodge a wrench, but could they dodge a lock? A Drew lock, that is. Friend zone. What's up, everybody? We'll get to that big Texans letdown in just a minute, but first, we start things off in the bayou. Up, oh, I mean the bayou. The 49ers came into the Superdome as the fifth seed in the NFC, looking to bounce back from a week 13 L they took to the Ravens in action Jackson. We have an opportunity no. to be great. No. We have an opportunity to go into this house and take something that they don't want to give us. Bro. Jimmy G was not about to let this opportunity slip away. He linked up with Emmanuel Sanders for a 75-yard touchdown, one of four touchdown passes that Gucci Garop had on the day. All right, this game was an absolute slugfest. It came down to the wire, and Garoppolo found George Kittle on a fourth and two to put the Niners in rage for a game-winning field goal. Mr. Williams, you got to stop being on the wrong sides of highlights, man. The 49ers social media team went into action and they had the New Orleans-themed shade to throw at the Saints after the play. All right, next up, my guy, Lamar Jackson, continues to lead the MVP race and stake his claim as one of the best dual-threat quarterbacks of all time. All right, he does have a little ways to go, but he did join Michael Vick as the only quarterbacks to break the 1,000-yard rushing mark in a season this Sunday. Lamar crossed over in the 1K by crossing over Bills linebacker Matt Milano and adding another pair of ankles to his collection. They are palling up in his man cave. That is a professional football player. He did that too. Anyway, Jackson also dished out three touchdown passes and he had the Bills searching for answers. The sneak peek at these photos probably didn't have it on him. Are you an NFL defender, media pundit, or D coordinator who has experienced any of these or similar feelings at the hands of Lamar Jackson? Then call Hugh. Hugh Jettiot. Hugh Jettiot and our team of associates use geo-targeted burner accounts to defend your honor by changing the narrative on social media for you. Sticks and stones could break your bones, but internet memes could kill you. So call a public defender who won't miss. If Lamar Jackson has made you involuntarily do the stanky leg in the middle of an NFL game, call Hugh. Hugh Jetty. <laughs> I had him. He was right there. <laughs> it's not your technique. He's just a freak. If Lamar Jackson's performance has made you delete old tweets about his durability, high ceiling at other positions, his mom being his agent, or questioning his ability to throw from the pocket in fear of being posted on old takes exposed, Call Hugh. Hugh Jetty. I mean, he would be a good wide receiver. I mean, what am I missing here? If Lamar Jackson embarrassed your defense on a nationally televised game and hurt your chances of becoming the next head coach of the Dallas Cowboys, call Hugh. Hugh Jetty. I had my guys in position. They just didn't make the play. Make the play! Hugh Jetty and Associates also serve as scouts. Technically, the Ravens passed on him in the first round, too. Agents. It's just that the people who couldn't get in touch with him was me. And radio announcers. Look, all I was saying that if you just glance quickly, it's similar. Okay, now, you didn't misspeak, but he's just a freak. I don't care what the internet says. You're not a huge idiot. I am. So you need to call me now at 1-600 to be fair. Hugh Jetty is not a real attorney, not a real company, and not a real name. We will not even take your call without an upfront payment via straight cash homie directly to AtHawk. Are right, we done? Okay. They'll buy this, right? Yeah, of course they will. Okay, so out in Kansas City, the Chiefs equipment team has got some splaining to do. After their gear somehow ended up in New Jersey instead of in Foxborough. That's right, somebody is probably getting fired. The gear arrived two hours before game time and saved the Chiefs from the embarrassment of forfeiting an NFL game. The Patriots tried to embarrass the Chiefs using a little trickery to take the early lead. But old Andy Reid has some tricks up his sleeves too. He lined up Travis Kelsey for the Reid option as Kelsey ran it in for the touchdown. He's no Lamar, but still works. Tom Brady tried to use his legs down the stretch to engineer a comeback and they had Gillette Stadium hype. Even Bill Belichick showed a little emotion. It wasn't much, but that's Bill. All right, but the Chiefs defense called game coming up with a game-winning fourth down stop. And afterwards, 
Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid showed a little emotion of their own. With the win, the Chiefs clinched the AFC West and a playoff berth. And the Patriots are on to Cincinnati. That's my Belichick impression. I'm working. All right, the Seahawks headed to L.A. looking for a win against their division rivals, the L.A. Rams, to keep their dreams of home field advantage alive. But the Rams had other plans. And even their cheerleaders got in on the action, doing their best Dwayne Haskins impression. All right, Jared Goff had the offense clicking in the first half as the Rams jumped out to a 21-3 lead. Quandre Diggs tried to put the Seattle Seahawks on his back in the second half. He caught Jared Goff slipping in back-to-back -back possessions in the third quarter, including this pick six. But Todd Gurley's stiff arm put Trey Flowers on his back, along with the Seahawks' hope of getting back into the game. The Rams gave the Seahawks their first loss on the road and stay in the hunt for the wild card. My how things have changed. All right, now time for my favorite story from the weekend. The Texans linebackers pulled up to the stadium wearing average Joe's jerseys and came out on the field looking just like average Joe's. That's right, I hope they enjoyed playing dress up. Actually, less than average Joe's because they gave the Broncos squad averaging 16.5 points a game, 31 points. In the first half, Locke may not be taking the Broncos to infinity and beyond, but that doesn't mean he can't take Buzz Lightyear's moves. Colts, Aiden L, courtesy of Jameis Winston and the Bucks, but Zach Pascal's bop celebration got the attention of the baby who shouted out the rendition on Twitter. He's like the 15th person I see do that celebration. You gotta think the other 14 guys are punching the air that they didn't get the All right, it's time for your favorite segment, Tough Day at the Office. I've never had one, but they're out there, right? Austin Eckler and Jaguar safety Andrew Winger went one-on-one, -on -one and Eckler had Winger sliding like the ice capade. All right, wide out Jarvis Landry put the Bengals defense in a spin cycle on this catch and run. Landry had Bengals linebacker Nick Vigil going in circles. But the Browns got their third straight W against the Bengals. And we have Phillip Rivers celebrating his 38th birthday with his best performance of the season. After this 84-yard tutty to Austin Eckler, Rivers gave Jags defensive end Yannick Ngakwe an earful on his way to the sideline. It's like he has a short memory or something. Rivers finished with three touchdown passes in the game. Happy birthday, Philly. Lastly, Raiders defensive tackle Maurice Hurst thought he was on his way for a pick six, but Ryan Tannehill made a poor business decision to save the touchdown. Tannehill's form looked great on the tackle, but guaranteed he's going to feel the consequences of that hit for the rest of the week. All right, that does it for the Trend Zone. We'll see you next week. Same time, same place. I'm a huge idiot, and the pleasure is all yours. Peace.